Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you how to put ribbed collars into your garments. It seems like a very simple thing, but it can be very tricky sometimes, so I'm going to show you the best way i found to do it that makes it simple and look very clean. So I'm starting from scratch here, so the first thing I want to do is measure the neckline. And I can do that by holding shift and clicking on both segments, and then this number in blue here is going to tell me the distance of half of the neckline and I'm going to simple, simply double it to find the full distance. So we can assume it's about 20 inches. Then I'm going to come up here and create a rectangle that is a few inches less than the full width of the neckline. So if it was about 20 inches, I can go ahead and create a 17 width rectangle and we'll go ahead and make it two inches high. The next thing we wanna do is split the rectangle in half so I'm going to click on one of the vertical lines, right click split, and go down to uniform split. So it's going to divide this rectangle in half. And then if I come over here and grab the internal line tool, I hold shift, I can create a perfectly horizontal line across the pattern, click enter, and now my rectangle is divided into two segments. Now we want to position the collar around the neckline. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on my avatar visibility, turn on my arrangement points, and I'm going to place the collar on this side of the neck. Collars are typically sewn from right to left, from the wearer's right to left, so we're gonna make sure that the opening matches up to the shoulder. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off arrangement points and visibility, and then we're simply going to sew the collar from right to left, here to the front of the neckline and to the back of the neckline. And if we sewed it right, we should have the seams looking like this. Then we're going to make sure that our collar is sewn at the edges, so it's going to close right here. And then the last thing I like to do before I simulate is strengthen the collar, as well as freeze all the pieces that the collar is being attached to. This can help it just simulate a little bit cleaner. So if we go ahead and click simulate, what we should have is the collar forming this volcano-like shape around the entire garment. And I'm gonna go ahead and turn down the particle distance on this collar just to be sure when we fold it, it won't get all wonky. And then once the collar has this shape, we're simply going to fold down the back end of the collar and sew it from top to bottom. Click simulate. So we can see the collar is starting to sort of take shape. One thing I want to do before we go any farther is turn the fold strength up on the fold line and click fold rendering, which is going to help this look a little bit cleaner. Now the next thing I'm going to do is just unstrengthen and unfreeze everything and see how it's falling without either of those things. A little bit of an issue there, but it looks like it's working itself out and that doesn't look too bad. So there's only a few more things that I would probably do to this collar to make it look a little bit more realistic. And the first thing is come over here to our sewing tool and check on the sewing of the collar. Um, as we can see by default, the sewing line type is set to custom angle. Now if we flip it to turned and then we click simulate, we're going to see that the collar is going to lay a lot more naturally along the rest of the garment. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with kind of keeping some of this definition if that's your personal preference, uh, but typically in Clo 3D, when you sew something to itself, you wanna make sure your seam setting is always um, set to turn. And though I think this overall looks better, you'll probably notice that we lost some definition around the seam line here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the collar and then add some rendering thickness. Let's go ahead and turn this up to two, click enter. And now we can see we got some of that definition right around the seam line back. Now, I'm pretty happy with how this collar is laying. I don't think personally there's anything else I would do to it. But if you are still struggling with getting your collar to lay nice, you can definitely add some elastic to the fold line. I'm gonna go ahead and click on the fold line, click elastic, and then make sure that the ratio is just shy of 100. I think 95 is fine. And when you click simulate, you can see that sometimes elastic can help snap the collar into a little bit of a better shape. Again, not completely necessary, but something that you can play around with. And the last thing is adding seam taping to the neckline. As you can see, I have a little bit of seam tape added to the front of the neckline. Again, I don't think this is 100% necessary, but sometimes it can help to kind of strengthen the collar 
the neckline around the collar, which can help the collar sit a little nicer. So those are things you can play around with, but ideally we don't have to add elastic to the collar because if this collar is the right size for this garment, it should lay pretty flat. And again, it should be a few inches shorter than the entire width of the neckline. So hopefully you guys found this video helpful. When I started doing my collars this way, it took out a lot of the guesswork and I was able to get a pretty clean result every single time. And if you're someone that's looking to improve your Clo 3D garments as a whole, but you're struggling to know where to start, be sure to check out my course, Level Up Your Clo 3D Garments, where I go over a ton of information just like this that can help you take your garments from very average to incredible. So as always, thank you for watching and good luck.